born to live freely in a world that allows me to express myself through movement. When I'm in the dance studio and having a hard time finding the right movement, I close my eyes and I'm taken back to a place. A place that allowed me to run free. A place to watch.
thanks also to the province of Alberta for all the support of our programs and services. Uh, we couldn't have this amazing night celebrating the arts without our sponsors. Um, so firstly, I'd like to thank Suncor who are presenting the Creative Collaboration Award for the seventh year. We are so grateful for Suncor's uh, partnership and all that Anna and Len do in our region. We have members of the Flaherty family presenting the Ken Flaherty Music Award. Suncor, yeah, <laughs> Suncor Energy Center for the Performing Arts presenting the Performing Arts Award. <laughs> Harvard Media presenting the Media Arts Award. <laughs> Contributing sponsor, Akron Engineering. And in kind sponsor, Staples and Cocktails by Boots. You can visit Dave and Bob. <laughs> Our amazing volunteers tonight and throughout the year, including our beloved board directors, thank you for all you do to support the growth and success of the arts. A special shout out to our friends and partners with the Multicultural Association for all their help with our event this year. <laughs> there was a time not too long ago when I would um, personally name and thank each staff member, but there are so many of them. I can't. <laughs> We'd be here all night. So suffice to say, I am once again in awe of the talent, uh, the passion, the constant raising of the bar that these creative professionals bring to Arts Council every day. Um, I'm so fortunate to work alongside them. Um, and lastly, perhaps most importantly, the arts educators, the arts administrators, and the artists. Thank you for all you do to make our world a better, brighter place, creating a remarkable quality of life for everyone. So now, let's continue to enjoy the fruits of their labor. I'm June Haskett, I'm a charcoal artist in Fort McMurray, and I'm so excited to be a part of the Buffy Awards and creating beautiful pieces for it. My artwork is charcoal art. I get the charcoal from the forest. It's a different way of creating because you're creating from the raw nature. It has a mind of its own. It's not like a pencil. It's not like a manufactured charcoal. So sometimes I'm drawing, it'll like completely crumble. And sometimes I'm drawing and I'll get nothing out of it because it's either too hard or too soft. It's really, it's interesting. It's different than, than your typical. And you get really messy, <laughs> really messy. <laughs> My thing is, I love to do trees, because it's, I'm creating a tree from a tree and that the fire took away. So this year's Buffy Awards, I wanted them to take home a part of Fort McMurray. I wanted them to, so if their journey leaves here, they still have like the Clearwater River or the Athabasca River, our skyline. I just wanted them to have that engulfed in their piece, that way they have something from home. I always do trees that represent family members. So it's like, or I, they have a story like of families in Fort McMurray. And doing the Buffy Awards, it was a bit of a challenge, and it still is a challenge. I'm still kind of like trying to find the balance of it. But it was just, how do I create the vision of dance with the tree? So it's been, it's been exciting because it's pushing me to, to really elaborate my thinking and my artistic side of it. So it's, yeah, it's fun. It's, it's totally a challenge, but fun. It means a lot to me because it's so important to share the love of Fort McMurray and to get the beauty out of the charcoal because it's such a scary time. So I like to, to spread it and to spread joy in it. I want them to have that feeling of, ah, this is, it feels right.
downtown Port McMurray and create our region's first incredible creation, an art incubator. Yes.
recognizes an artist or group creating functional and non-functional craft-based work including, but not limited to, beadwork, book arts, ceramics, textiles, fashion and wearable art, costuming, furniture, glass, jewelry, metals, or wood. And the short list of artists are... I am Sherry Duncan and I have been nominated for craft. You can see in my office I'm surrounded by the art, the craft that I do. It is often using recycled materials. I often will see something going on in the community and go and take a class or I'll find something online and learn a new skill. I'll think, oh, that would be fun to do and I'll pick that up. Uh, hello, my name is Dave Hines. Um, I've been shortlisted for the craft category and I'm a woodworker for Hines Woodworking. So my creative process, it all starts with whatever project I'm about to, to, about to build. And it usually starts off as a mental image and then I make rough sketches in a notebook. Um, it's pretty old school. I'm not very good at computer drafting, so it's kind of paper for me. Um, I rough out a, a sketch. I start making dimensions on the sketch and choose my uh, my wood species that I'd like to use, and then uh, I start laying my parts on the boards. The, the build quality for any piece of furniture that I'm going to make is, is more important than anything else. Something can look good, but it has to be functional. I want, if I'm going to build something and spend two months or three months of my time building it, it's going to be built to last. I'm Jennifer Shortman, and I was nominated for craft. My work is a combination of tradition and culture. Some of the items that I make are birch bark baskets, um, moccasins, uh, mucklucks, I do beading, I do crocheted items. I hope my work makes people feel connected with our culture and I hope that they feel proud of what they are wearing or what they are presenting. Andy. And welcome, Guest Culture presents the Craft Award. Tanse kitakam skat na wakakyo, ni apisem kamuhti asi nitikaso nehyo eskweyo. Director of First Nations, Igwa, Vice Chair with Arts Council Wood Buffalo. So good evening, everyone. My name is Jess Croucher. I am the Director of First Nations with Arts Council Wood Buffalo and our current Vice Chair. And I have the honor to announce our first award for tonight for the craft category. But before I announce the winner, I just want to take one small moment of your time to talk about the theme of tonight. The theme of this event, which was planned beautifully by our staff, Future Midnight. The future. When I was on my healing journey, started my healing journey, began my, uh, my opportunity to reconnect with myself and with my culture, I started with the old people. Uh, those grandmothers and those grandfathers, those aunties and uncles that I would see downtown who would say, come and see me, my girl. Come have tea with me. Come talk with me. Uh, don't forget who you are. Come and see me. And so when I began that journey, that's who I went to first. And I would listen to them. I would learn from them. I would hear stories about our family, about our history, about our spiritual beliefs, about our values. And I was so deeply grateful. And one night I was on the phone with uh, one of my cookums, one of my grandmothers. And I said to her, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it took me so long to come home. And I'm sorry that it took me so long to spend the time and sit here and learn from you. And she said to me, she said, repeat after me, Ote Nigan, Ote Nigan, we have the future. Because the future is Indigenous. And by that I mean the future. The future is, connect, is land connection. The future is land knowledge. The future is land-based values. The future is our ceremonies. 
The future is our art, our storytelling, it's our communities. The future is our two worlds braiding together. The future is our children. And so tonight, no matter what happens, no matter what the outcomes of these awards are, no matter who walks home with a Buffy, I want you to remember those words, Otenigan. So repeat after me, Otenigan. Hi, hi. So with that, I'd like to announce the winner of the Craft Award, Heinz Woodworking. <laughs> is an artist or group who uses traditional and or contemporary skills and materials to create art within any artistic discipline. And the shortlisted artists are... Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm a and I'm nominated for the Indigenous Artists category. When it comes to drag, I really don't have like a very specific process that allows me to do it. I, I grew up with a very strong feminine influence, so I'm all about challenging the gender norms, you know, gender binaries, things like that. And I think it's really important that you feel comfortable with yourself, express that however you want. And like I said before, it shows. If you like what you do, it shows to other people and hopefully inspires them to do the same. <laughs> See, um, Marina. <laughs> David Janbeer, Evon Janbeer, will you tell us who he is? Ah, tell us who is he? Thus, is he no na kesa to kaza dolly? Kalu sata sata ni the singers in a kalu sata as dolly ni dundi na na the balias. Merci. He said, I did not know any Dene that I learned from my Dene teacher. You know, when he was looking at me, he said Dene teacher, he didn't say my name, right? But he was looking at me, and I, uh, I, I just choked up. Hi, my name is Kim Coppard. I am shortlisted for the Indigenous and I am the creator and maker of Baby God Creations. And I find it very, I don't know, I guess healing? as well to be and <clears throat> not only for myself but for other people as well to wear my pieces with pride knowing that they do have a piece that is um, a rep representation of their culture that they can wear with pride. by my colonial name today, I see. I don't know what that's about. Hi everyone, I'm Simma Down. <laughs> I do sit on the Arts Council board. I was uh, came to that position as the Métis director, um, and it is my great honor as a two-spirit Métis person to be able to uh, announce the winner for Indigenous Artists. And this year's recipient is BB uh, God Creations. <laughs> Rising star. 
recognizes the commitment of a young artist, 12 to 17, in any arts discipline to developing their craft through performance, exhibitions, and other forms of skill development. And the shortlisted artists are... Hi, my name is... share with others that stereotypes don't matter and you can do pretty much anything you want to and I hope that it makes other people feel comfortable and inspired and able to step out of their box. Uh, when I was seven I started with uh, vocal coach Diane Perry and we uh, just started with basic Christmas and musical theater pieces so we were just trying to explore my vocal range and see what I would bring to the art form and emotionally and just characters and all that fun stuff. And then uh, as an artist, I was encouraged to accompany myself. So that came to guitar and piano. I started with early levels of piano and then I was learning guitar at school and then eventually led to uh, studying with uh, Park Academy Vocal Arts. Thank you. Jazz. <laughs> I hope to become a dance teacher at YMM Dance and inspire others to become a great dancer. I spent two weeks this summer at the Royal Olympic Ballet for training. It made me feel like I got better at my dancing and just like happy. <laughs> myself with my art, therefore in a lot of my art pieces, you know, there will be a lot of, um, you know, gothic elements, um, and of pride and whatnot. Um, otherwise, uh, I hope people feel represented by my art. A lot of times when you don't see yourself in media, you have to create that representation or become it. So that's, that's my goal with a lot of my art. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank, thank you everyone. Good evening again. It's such <coughs> a honor to stand here before you and uh, to present this award on behalf of mayor and council. I also like to recognize that Councillor James Stroud is right here with me and Councillor Doga was here before. Um, Council, the municipality, and Arts Council Wood Buffalo have a strong partnership, and we are thrilled to congratulate them on their 10th year anniversary this year. I would also like I would also like to congratulate all the incredible nominees in the Rising Star category. We are so inspired by all their creativity passion and talent, well deserved. This year, 2022, the, <laughs> the Rising Star Award goes to Kate Vago. <laughs>
we're going to be here in 2034. We travel a whole 10 years into the future. Our tank looking good. Funny reading, funny math. All right.
visual arts, recognizes an artist or group active in painting, sculpture, drawing, printmaking, photography, or installation art. And the shortlisted artists are... My name is Alex Marinier, and I am nominated for the visual arts. So my art looks like a lot of things. It just depends on what I'm going through at the time or what's inspiring me. I like to try lots of different um, techniques, lots of different uh, um, projects. Uh, sometimes I'm inspired by nature, sometimes I'm inspired by um, dark things or grungy things. Um, so my art can look like a lot of different things. Um, overall, it kind of has the same vibe. I'd say my art generally has a bit of like a, a darker kind of aspect to it, just a little bit of a grunge kind of feel. Um, and I don't know if that's just something that I've developed over time or it's just something that comes out internally, but I'd say it all kind of ties back together. Hi, my name is Andrea Pita. The main medium I use is resin. It's actually a chemical, uh, but it is combined uh, by resin and hardener to make the final product. The wood buffalo region and Fort McMurray in particular has uh, amazing beauty, has amazing natural beauty. Uh, the colors of the sunrise, sunset, northern lights, and the Athabasca River, has, which has inspired me to create one of my best artwork beyond this world. So yes, I'm lucky to live in this region. Art is a language of its own. Sometimes it, does, it expresses the things which you cannot say through words. It captures the natural beauty and bring meaning, reflection, and joy in your life. It contributes to the beauty of a place. I think Art has the ability to make this world a better place to live in. Uh, hi, my name is Anna Chai. I'm here in Fort McMurray, and I've been nominated for a Visual Arts Buffy Award. Um, my work is all over the place. I do weddings and I do uh, special events. Every year we do the Red Dress Project, um, which brings local awareness to missing and murdered Indigenous women. I do um, all types of work with local photographers for um, just about everything. My favorite part about my job is how I make people feel when they leave the salon. Um, just making people feel comfortable and loving the skin that they're in is my main focus. Today, uh, I am Matt Salem, uh, board director for the Arts Council of Wood Buffalo for film, photography, and videography. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, again, so honored to be giving out these awards to uh, the uh, visual arts category today. Uh, to quote a French artist, Edgar Degas, "Art is not what you see; it's what you make others see." And that's what these people here have done for you tonight, throughout the community. They, not only have they beautified our city and enriched it with their beauty, they also, you know, they, they, they have that nurturing, warm creativity that they spread around as well. And, uh, you know, I guess without uh, further ado, you don't want to hear me up here. Yeah. Let's see who the, <laughs> the winner is... Ambreen. <gasps>
performance art, acting, directing, playwriting, theatre design, comedy, and or technical production, such as stage management. <laughs> and the shortlisted artists are... My name is Helen Kalora. get so much joy when I can watch a young performer just start to blossom in their own skin and like find their own voice and find their bodies and find their movement and just become really excited about theater because without them there's no future in theater and so nurturing them I think right now as an older performer is an older performer is something that is like Probably the most important part of my work. <laughs> my name is Tim Hill. Well, I've been involved in so many different genres over the years that it's hard to nail it down to one. You know, the, with the genres like the mad paced um, farce to the deeply moving musicals to uh, the deliberately over-the-top dinner theater performances, to the discipline of uh, dance, and, uh, and even the uh, exciting but yet unforgiving uh, genre of film. Well, my name is Jenny Price. blend of different types of art forms. Yes, I can read lines and act in scenes, but I can also sing and dance when I have to. <laughs> Where I do my art is um, many places, but I mean, obviously on stage, um, in my car. Actually, a fair amount of rehearsal happens in my car. One of my favorite things about theater is the fact that it is kind of so unlike you know, film or um, or a painting where sort of like there's this physical piece that exists and is always there, theater is temporary. And there's something really powerful about that. It just lives in our memories. It's one of my favorite things about it. It's one of my favorite things about theater is the idea that you can do the same performance multiple times and it's different every time. <laughs> to be uh, uh, presenting the Performing Arts Awards on behalf of the Suncor Energy Center for the Performing Arts. <laughs> How many times can I say Performing Arts in sentence? Uh, performing artists and the, or well, Performing Arts and the uh, artists that embody that uh, art form are radically important. They are the kinds of artists that can take a blank canvas like a street or a room or a stage and convert it into a place that can allow an entire group of people to share in an emotion, a memory, a moment. Uh, and share stories and how they are feeling about those stories with the world and their peers. So, without any further ado, the 2022 recipient, recipient of the Performing Arts Buffy Award goes to Jenny Bryce. <laughs> Comes from nature. 
Um, everything that I wrote about somehow was bigger than me. Um, and that's pretty much, that's what life experience is. It is more than you. Um, and a way of connecting with people through nature um, is just something magical. There's some magic in it. That's, that's why I use nature in a lot of my poetry. They show up as metaphors uh, to reaching out for a connection higher than yourself. My name is Dorothy Bensley. I'm a writer, I currently have three main works. The first is a children's picture book called Summer North Coming. The second is an anthology called Mothering, in which I have two poems. And the third is a new YA novel called Escape from the Wildfire, which is based on the wildfire in Lytton in 2021. To me, art is finding beauty in less obvious places, even in the most dire circumstances, and seeing the resilience of people. I hope that my writing is thought-provoking and inspiring. I'm Sherry Duncan, and my work looks like writing on any number of forms, typically paper, but I also write on canvas. I will write using the typical pens and pencils, and I write a number of different kinds of things. I write poetry, I write, I've written a novel, I write a blog post, I write articles for um, professional papers. Privilege to be here tonight to announce the Literary Art Award to the best, um, to the Buffy Award to the 2002 Literary Art Artist. Just a minute. Thank you. My little chart. So it goes to Jamal. <laughs> Everybody here 
you're currently in Oakwood in ways you probably wouldn't even dream about unless we showed you. Yes. They are putting Wood Bubbler on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Tourism is on the rise. There are people traveling to our region from all over the world just to experience this arts movement. It's actually made our community more vibrant than it's ever been. Quiet. Somewhere in a pasture, a cow named Quiet grazes among daisies on grass so green as to be fiction. This cow named Quiet knows nothing beyond her pasture. In her unknowing, there is peace. The reflection of the sunlight in her brown eyes is a revelation that hangs in the air like morning. One day, Quiet will die. The light, the air, the daisies, and the bugs will all mourn her. The grass, green as make-believe, will stop growing. Not forever, but for a while. Until a morning so clean, so pure and crisp extends across the pasture, and everything that feels it knows it is quiet. For now, though, Quiet eats the grass and runs until she's tired. When she's tired, she sleeps. The light, the air, the daisies, the bugs, the grass, and quiet are happy. backgrounds that keep us from the deep, dense stillness, our true connection to oneself and to each other. It's a wonder how all things quiet exist, but only when we go searching for their apparent silence, the sunrise, the sunset, the starry night, all things of sound most naturally quiet. When I grow up, when I grow up, I don't want to be a mechanic or a plumber. I don't want to spend my days at school in the summer. Uh, I'm not good at math and I'm terrible at numbers. Biology sucks. History is kind of a bummer. There's only one thing that I want to do. So give me some sticks and run for cover. When I grow up, I'm going to Mom and Dad always say, we're your biggest fans, but sometimes I wonder as they hide the pots and pans. So, so now I've started to practice down in Grandma's cellar, and someday I'm going to be famous. At least that's what I tell her. Grandma loves what I played. She'll sometimes say, she'll nod and smile in her grandmotherly way, but I don't think she's heard a beat that I've played. I think she's turned off both her hearing aids. I wonder, I wonder what would you have taken with you if you had the time, a day to share, or if you had a moment to spare. Would you have taken with you your father's spectacles, sitting like a lonely guest, or your mother's silk sari hidden in her dowry chest? 
would you have taken with you your sister's days spent in the yard skipping ropes? Or would you have taken your brother's youth brimming with hopes? Would you have taken with you your own memories collected in your childhood home? Or kept those rice fields under your eyes where your dreams roamed? What would have you taken with you? The dark clouds of death had not taken shore if a deadly war had not knocked at your door. Oh. Well, like the art of the spoken word, please take your hands together for Emma Carter.
This typically includes artistic practice and achievement, recognition by peers and the artist's contribution to the local and broader artistic community. This year's Lifetime Achievement recipient has worked within their industry for over 22 years in Alberta. They have trained with some of the best teachers and dance professionals in the industry, are a graduate of Dance Educators of America, are a member of the Society of Russian Ballet and Adjudicators Alliance, and an Acro Dance Certified Adjudicator. This dance professional has worked on numerous community theater projects and has been the artistic choreographer for productions such as The Chorus Line, All Shook Up, Cabaret, Footloose, and Flashdance the Musical. They have been the creative leader behind Generations Dance Studio since it opened its doors in September 1999 and continues to provide top quality dance education for local dancers today. This award recipient has been featured in Dance Studio Life magazine for her superior work as an artistic director and business operations manager. Congratulations to this year's Lifetime Achievement recipient, Kim Hurley. Show on the go here. <laughs> hey, Phil Joy, are you okay? Oh you right? my goodness, my energy circuits are running low. Aleha, yeah. have you any wee sweeties? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. But I did see some at the buffet out there. Oh, thank goodness, you programmed me to run on sweets and treats. Yeah. <laughs> Sweets from a sweet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't we take like a 25 minute intermission with zero time traveling and we can all enjoy some delicious dessert created by meals and things. And how yes. about we'll see you back here in 25 minutes from whatever time it is right now. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Do I hype you? Just knowing that there's so many artistic people in Fort McMurray, connecting and seeing that there's other creatives that do the same thing that you're doing and you can work on things together. I feel like this really opened up my mind and doors for me to just really continue making connections, which I loved. So my name is Jenna Buffett. I own and operate Jenna Buffett Photography. I have a studio in Fort McMurray and I've been doing this since 2017. I focus mostly on, or I try to focus mostly on, the journey of womanhood and motherhood and capturing that in a very timeless way. But I also do a lot of other things like corporate work, um, events, uh, real estate, so I kind of do a little bit of everything. So I got into the Buffy's creative team through Hannah and Lue. Um, they contacted me in advance and we, you know, prepped really well. And my role was as the photographer and kind of bringing their artistic vision to life. So the shoot was 12 different people, which um, represented 12 different categories for the Buffy Awards. And each person was painted with some really cool face paint that represented that category and I photographed them with this kind of futuristic look and 
we were inspired by some movie films and some other artists work to bring to life this kind of futuristic feel. Collaborating with the whole artistic team was so awesome, honestly. Probably the highlight of my year. I loved working with Vera and Mitchell. They were both so like, just like honed in on the style and the um, vibe that we were going for. And we were kind of like feeding off of each other. Like, okay, well let's try this. Or I'm gonna light it this way. If you do this, we'll, you know, incorporate these colors. It was a lot of fun. And I feel like we just jived and it was, it was great. I think my favorite part was meeting with other creatives even the 12 people that came in to be photographed i feel like i got to know them even though it was so brief just hearing why they were there what they're uh, representing and also like just sharing space with other creatives was really fun and something that i know that i don't do often enough and that was a challenge to myself to stay in touch and keep these connections going because that was yeah like i said the highlight of my year so Definitely meeting with other creatives was my favorite part. So what I created with the Buffy's artistic team was totally different than anything I've ever done actually. It was a challenge for me but a welcome challenge because sometimes you get comfortable doing things that you kind of, it comes easy and this was something that I was like really having to think out and um, I also kind of just followed the flow of how things were going but also having to prepare and like okay, these colors, I actually brought up the color wheel for this to see what colors were gonna go well together just to, you know, bring it back to the basics. It was a challenge, but I really enjoyed it. I think the Buffies is super important for Fort McMurray. I think it's a way that we can recognize artists in the region and also just celebrate what art is and how impactful it is for people. Um, sometimes I feel it can be underestimated how important art is and just being able to showcase locals, connect with each other, and uh, just have something to work towards, drive towards, I think it's great. I actually can't wait to see what people wear. I feel like from what I've been told, I've never been to a Buffy's um, awards, but apparently people go pretty intense with the outfits, so I'm all, I've am i been planning what I'm gonna wear, this is gonna be a futuristic vibe, but no, in all seriousness, I'm looking forward to seeing people just cheer each other on. You know, you're going there, you're getting these awards, there's gonna be lots of people, lots of artists, and I think that just being able to be like, yes, go this person or go that person, and seeing the different categories, and again, being able to make those connections, really cool. I just wanna say thank you. I feel very blessed that I was asked to do this, um, and just to be a part of something, and after the wildfires, after COVID, after all of these things that have happened, uh, the floods, like, it just feels like really good to be able to get together with other people and just kind of celebrate art and that that was, was really cool and i think i said really cool like a hundred times so maybe <laughs> cut that out <laughs>
the holographic side of things. And I thought that how often do you get to work with holographic as well as uh, neon lighting? And I'm very, very excited to show you all how it turned out. The Buffies isn't completely different from past uh, design work that I have done. It is one of the first, I'd say, events that I have designed. I think the, the thing that I am most proud of in this design is working with more of a sculptural and very light dependent materials and creating these Northern Light-esque shapes. I think I'm pretty proud of how it's uh, turning out. It's still, it's still being built. So uh, I guess I can really fully answer this when it's completed. <laughs> but so far, I'm very proud of it. My favorite part about being Part of a creative process and creative team is working with other creatives and being able to collaborate and create this other world that will have the audience immersed as well as the actors. And I think it's going to be quite fabulous. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing the audience's reaction as well as I'm really excited to see all the creatives in one room being awarded for achieving excellence in the artistic field, especially in Alberta. I, I think we can all be very proud of the talent that exists here. I'm very excited to see something out of this world, uh, kind of something that will give us hope that things could be again alive and vibrant. My name is Bera Fustik. I'm originally from former Yugoslavia and I've been involved um, for more than 20 years in different art media. My artistic practice include watercolor paintings, acrylic, um, some mixed media, and uh, recently, maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> not really recently, I've been involved in face painting. And the process of creating uh, uh, 11 uh, different faces uh, was kind of a long process. Basically, uh, first time, when I saw different categories, I was imagining what kind of faces I, I like to see. I did small sketches, but it's different when you transfer something from the paper on the face. And uh, the process is even more uh, different when you see the person. When I was aware about all that categories, um, decision didn't come uh, at once. I was wondering, having all kinds of ideas. And then I was limited with the time, 30 minutes per face, and also no knowing uh, that it will be futuristic um, idea, something uh, uh, kind of give me directions and lead me in that direction. And yeah, I had images in mind, but sometimes going there uh, at, uh, the place where we did face painting, at the moment I talked to person, things change. And basically for every category, I had idea what is in my mind, um, uh, let's say fine arts or dancers, but I was a little bit kind of hesitant, uh, thinking what, what another person will say, what the uh, artist will think about, uh, like is that my image uh, going to correlate with their images. My name is Mitchell Bowers, but I'm more commonly known by my drag character, Sima Down. Uh, my artistic practice is mostly drag, but I also do theater, I paint, I bead, 
I am a makeup artist, I do a little bit of everything. So I got onto the creative team as an indigenous makeup artist. For the promotions, I created uh, one of the makeup looks uh, for Indigenous Arts. So I had a lot of ideas going into uh, this creating this makeup look. Um, I originally was planning, thinking about doing, uh, really focusing on my Métis heritage, um, planning to do something in like a pointillism, almost making it look like beading, um, and then. It was through cons consultation with the model and really looking at her artwork that inspired the final outcome, which it was the Northern Lights, and then um, using feathers and the medicine wheel colors as well to really uh, take some of that direct symbolism from Indigenous culture. The Northern Lights, which in um, Cree culture symbolize souls that have passed on, um, and it's something that is featured very heavily in Amy's work and so I was really inspired by her work in creating this makeup look. When I see the person, we didn't have a time just one by one and person sit and I do, do my uh, uh, painting, face painting and I give them a mirror and they see how it look like. Their faces and reactions was most rewarding but let's say even not giving uh, them a mirror, uh, at one point Kritsana uh, was there and I pa uh, face painted Salvador's Dali uh, face and uh, before I gave him a mirror to see, uh, he said, I know what you did. Uh, he said it's Salvador Dali. <laughs> that was really fun for me. My favorite part of the creative process is getting to see some of the specs behind the scenes stuff, seeing other people's processes work and being a part of a collaborative team. Working with all these artists and specifically with Jenna Buffett photography, it was very exciting and sometimes even scary at the moment when I know uh, every half hour I have a different faces and also Jenna was very supportive. She will encourage me, oh, just do this and uh, light and my photography will finish things because sometimes I was thinking, oh, I didn't have enough time to finish. I, I was about to add something else and uh, she was uh, saying, okay, we will work like this. And in the end, I was happy with the result, but yeah, the process was not so easy for me. But every single artist who came in different categories uh, gave me support and that was collaboration. They smiled, they uh, looked good and they were excited and uh, yeah, no one was kind of thinking, what is this? <laughs> that was part of that I love it. The Buffies are an amazing way to celebrate and showcase the artists of our region as a previous winner and somebody who's uh, worked on the last couple, it's um, it's really great to be recognized and to be able to recognize others in our community that are doing so many great things. It is a celebration of people who are uh, committed to something that they love and uh, that's uh, something I always appreciate in this community. It's very vibrant and multicultural and supportive for artists all over the world. Arts Council Wood Buffalo is my go-to organization for help connecting with our local artists and to partner with for engaging community opportunities. I really appreciate Arts Council as an educator. Over the years, um, they've come in and actually worked directly with my drama students. Arts Council Wood Buffalo has helped to expand my network, which has grown my photography business. My business, Rajasthan Creations by Purva, deals in various things of art and culture from India. 
and art council of football fellow they helped me a lot to uh, expand my business it's amazing to work with them and feel like we are working as a family Arts Council of Wood Buffalo has always approached me as a professional, even as a startup, which helped me to have more confidence in my work. Collaborating with Arts Council Wood Buffalo and getting a bunch of different production companies together really makes us all better in the end, and that's what Arts Council is all about. come to my attention that we are out of black paint and instead of fearing the shivering open shelves, I became their friend. I held them close, hand in hand with broken hearts, perfect symmetry, loose nuts and bolts, a catastrophe of colors smashed together, lonely messed up broken parts, mashed together to walk this earth, just you and me living out our wildest fantasies. And my tears are you, it's all I've known, and I let you roll down my cheeks and across my nose. Drops down my chest, leaving a waiting pool of self-exploration and naked self-doubt. A puddle of black paint. Maybe I'm just a shadow of your sorrow tomorrow. A ghost you see through when no one believes you you're lucky 13 in your bad words and curses you're my culture and painting my chorus and verses in the ashes of the fire in the silt from the fire my heart beats to your rhythm my song flows
Arts Council is critical to Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo. It attracts talent, creates jobs, and boosts tourism for our region. Music and art are the heartbeat of a community, and 100.5 Cruise FM, Mix 103.7, and myself are proud to support Arts Council Wood Buffalo because they keep that heart beating. 100.5 Cruise FM supports Arts Council because we believe that arts are essential to a healthy community, and we're dedicated to keeping Wood Buffalo healthy. I support Arts Council because arts and culture is what defines the very identity of a society, and a community without arts and culture has no heart or soul. Mix 103.7 supports Arts Council. Because we believe supporting local artists makes Wood Buffalo an even greater place. Friends of SECBA supports Arts Council because we believe in empowering local artists to enrich the diverse tapestry of our region.
good. My energy circuits are all sugared up again. Oh, good. Excellent. Um, oh, and just in time. Look, another message. Okay. Let's see if this is what they're looking for tomorrow. Oh, whatever. Why even bother? I've written 13 letters addressed to you over the years, and I must believe there's a reason why this one has made its way to you today. It has been an absolute honor to watch you grow through every season, and I hope you can understand that this path has always been laid out for you. It is almost like the children who came before us had plans of their own for this timeline, and their ceremony begins again on that August morning when brother held you in his arms at the hospital. One day your parents will not be around, and you need to be there for one another. This I know to be true. It is inevitable you will come across people who will try to starve the fire within and it's up to you to learn the elements of consent and to respect your own boundaries. Speak your truth proudly, honor the medicine, and be mindful with your heart. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows, the rivers flow. Lastly, there are messages waiting for you in your dreams when you sleep, and that will let you know you are meant to be there. Please think big, walk big, talk big when it happens. Okay, my girl. I'm so glad you're here. 
here, Eric? Let's watch this video. They have to know that. They have to make them understand who we are. They have to make themselves as human being with us, be a partnership and share each other with us what we have. So with that, my tea is getting cold, partner. I think I'll drink my tea and I think it's enough for tonight. And thank you very much. Marci Cho. Marci Cho. artist or teacher working in schools or the community that uses the arts to provide a meaningful learning experience for any age. And the shortlist of artists are... I'm Catherine Kupris. I am the instructor at the Portland Public Day Studio and I've been shortlisted for arts education. Dancing is two parts. <laughs> So there's the dancer, and then there's also the audience. So there's two things to share. Um, my everyday, the most important thing is the dancers. And I was four years old, I started dancing, and from the minute I started doing it, I never really wanted to do anything else. So my goal is to kind of bring that to somebody else that comes to see me now. Mom, my name is Diane Perry, and I'm for the arts education award. I think my inspiration comes from the artists who have gone and tried and failed and yet continue to try again and fail and try again and fail and then try and succeed and see that moment on their faces when they finally do how their self-esteem and their worthiness is swollen up into them and that I think is what inspires me to see those little lights go on all the time. My name is Emma Carter. We are nominated for the Arts Education Award. So our music students have recitals and our dancers have their dance show. It's an opportunity for them to perform for their families, for their friends, for their loved ones, everything that they spent that year learning. Um, they get to do it in this big, beautiful theater we have at the Suncor Energy Center for the Performing Arts, under lights, with a big audience, and it's really a special opportunity for them to feel how exciting live performing can be for performance sake, and not because they're competing, and not because they have to, but because it's, it's fun, and it's for all of them, and it represents them and the work that they're doing. Alexandra De Rossi. Hello, thank you so much for everybody coming today and I'm very honored to be presenting this award for arts education. Um, I'm Alex, I'm on the board as well as a member and if you aren't one, you should be. <laughs> and without further ado, the recipient of the Arts Education Award is Diane Perry.
recognizes an artist or group who performs, composes, writes songs, DJs, and or works in technical production in all genres of music. It is named for Ken Flaherty, a tireless developer and promoter of local musicians in honor of his contributions to music and musicians in Wood Buffalo. And the short list of artists are... My name is Tyler Wood. And not just because I'm nominated for this award for Ken Flaherty Base 4, but Ken has always been an inspiration for me since I was a kid. We used to have a place here in town called Cafe on King. Nice to see uh, Ken and Dale Porche down there all the time. And then eventually we started a band in town called Tailgate. And uh, I had the pleasure of starting to write songs with Ken since I was probably 20 years old. I'm going on 41 here in October, so it's a while back. But uh, yeah, we, you know, Ken and I have written tons of songs and, and uh, he helped shape me as a songwriter for sure. So he's one of our main influences. Uh, I'm I'm Brandon Bryson and I've been nominated uh, for the Ken uh, Flaherty Award. So I, I guess it's kind of a, a mix of all the things that uh, I listen to and am sort of inspired by. So sort of, I, I play acoustic rock and prog rock and... I play drums in an indie kind of punk band called When April Met July as well. Uh, all in the prog band, and then I do my solo stuff, which is just Brandon Bryson. But it's like those are the, the sessions for, that like you hear about on, on like biographies and stuff, where you're up till five or six in the morning, and then you get up with the birds, you go outside, and you light a smoke or whatever, and you're like, oh, I guess I should go to bed now that it's like eight o'clock in the morning. My name is. Uh... With the Arts Council this year. I'm really doing the blues run now. The blue, well, come on, I'm blue, man. I started doing blues. So I'll do some more country and I'll do some more blues. That seems to be where it's going. And then instrumental stuff and music therapy as well has really inspired me to take a deep dive into how music helps us. So my influences are all over the place. I got music therapists influencing me right now. I got the blues influencing me right now. And all that past history that just flavors everything. You know, you hear a good song and you're like, yeah. That's basically what it's all about. <laughs> tireless promoter of and mentor to all local musicians and he always worked to foster a community where they could express their creativity and their musicality and it was with that passion and drive he worked at a grassroots level to help create this music community in Portland Murray. We'd just like to take a moment to thank Mike Allen and Scott Meller uh, for initiating the 1030 Music Award and Dad's Honor. Uh, thank you to the council for continuing to support this award, and we are proud to sponsor this award and thankful that his legacy will live on in Corporate Murray community and around Wood Buffalo. Yeah. So the Music Award goes to. So I think the loudest applause will come outside this room tonight. Uh, the Ken Flaherty Music Award goes to Tyler Lillard. second just to say thank you this has been an amazing event everything thank you so much for the nominations thank you to whoever did that I'm not sure it's been a pleasure to 
to uh, receive this award because Ken was my friend and uh, I miss him very much. Pleasure to get it from his family members. This is hard for me right now, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, when my wife and I do road trips, we listen to Ken Flaherty music. We live in K-flat when we do road trips. If you don't know what that is, look up his albums. He's, yeah. he's such a great artist and uh, you'll hear it, you'll feel it. My best, uh, my, one of my good friends, John Castano, he said, Ken Flaherty, you could hear every cigarette he ever smoked and every whiskey he ever drank, what he sang. And you'll know what I mean when you listen to his music. Thank you very much. Media Arts recognizes an artist or group working in film, video, podcasting, graphic design, animation, digital art, web-based art, audio and sound art, media art installation, new media, or any fusion thereof. And the short list of artists are... I'm Ashley Lawrenson, I'm one of the... sometimes some like photo blogging and stuff too. Um, lots of work just showing off people in the community and, and the place where we live. Really interested in kind of the intersection of um, environment and place and people. So I really love working with young people, especially to take that journey early in life and, uh, and be inspired and, and create art. Um, and hopefully that's something that sticks with them for the rest of their life. They may not pick up a camera or an instrument later in life, but they'll uh, hopefully remember that kind of core part of themselves. Tanse. My name is Patricia. I'm an indigenous artist from Alberta. I am nominated for Media Arts. Helping work makes people feel comfortable in their own skin. Coming from indigenous communities, small communities, I want people to feel like they can do it, they can achieve, they can go for what they want, no matter their background, no matter where they came from, no matter the struggles or hardships are. Being in an isolated community really, um, it's hard. You have discouragements because you don't have the resources that you need to have in order to fulfill, to actually become something and become somebody. In an indigenous community, I really want people to feel happy and I want them to feel harmony and I want them to feel comfortable in their own skin and I want them to know that they can do it. Thank you all. How are you doing tonight? Looking fabulous. This room looks terrific. I want to give a big hand to all of the organizers of this event. It is absolutely amazing. Off the charts, let's hear it for them. I also want to congratulate a couple of good friends of mine, Jerry and Jen, back there. And I just want to tell you all, uh, just by seeing them tonight, just so you know, when we go golfing, they actually wear those outfits. <laughs> now, Jerry gets some strange looks until we play in the evening, and he's looking for his ball in the woods, and then he goes, who's got the last lap now? <laughs> Well, I want to tell you uh, a little bit of a story. So when I was a young kid in high school, my dad was a journalist in Toronto where we grew up. And um, my English teacher asked me, Craig, what do you want to do when you graduate? I'm like, I don't know, maybe become a journalist? And she said, oh, that would be like me becoming a concert pianist. So that went out the window. I decided that radio was the place to be. One of the reasons that I liked radio is because I said, I always wanted to do something where I'm not working a day in my life. With radio, you don't do that because it's not a job. When I looked at my paycheck, I found that out. So that's the truth about media. But one of the things about media that's fantastic is 
You get a creative outlet. And with the outlet, you get to do anything you want. Your imagination is your limit. You can keep going as far as you want, as high as you want. And the more effort you put in and the more creative you are, the better you do. So with that said, I have some very good uh, news for someone here. Congratulations to all the nominees. I want to hear it for McGuffin Media. <laughs>
of any format, including cultural dance. And the short list of artists are... Hi, my name is... <laughs> it is not a, a, a secret that dance saved my life, so I know the impact it has on folks. I know that a lot of our dance spaces are suicide prevention for a lot of these kids. Our dance spaces are safe spaces, and our community needs that. So if we can um, give them an outlet to connect, to let go of anything, to process, to just feel like they belong somewhere, then they're gonna be better for our community. Assistant Director of YMM Dance Company. I think inspiration comes from just various different things. Um, sometimes I could be watching a movie and I'm like, oh, that's neat, or a song, or I'm flipping through a magazine, or just you know driving down the road and something will, will pop up. And sometimes just life experiences where we create some of our best pieces from. I think the best part about owning wine and dance company is I'm from here, I'm raised here, I grew up dancing here, and now I get an opportunity to give back to our amazing community. <laughs> Thank 
working mostly with children and dancers who are learning a dance education. So for me, I work with them in a studio format and we're learning technique and art form and choreography. For me, I want people to love dance. I think it's really important that the education of dance is far more important than the actual performing part. I want kids and dance artists to know that they are capable of doing things, and I just want to find a way that they can learn that. My specialties are hip hop and afro, and I usually work a lot with our younger kids, so usually the under fives. Um, and most recently, I've actually started working with our under under twos, so everywhere from three months up till that two-year-old age. to me as well, uh, and all the lovely people listed yeah. in the yeah. Um So, seriously, who cares? Let's get to, let's get, who cares about me? Let's get to them. And the recipient is Miss Kelly. Yeah. or group of administrators working in arts-related production, marketing, project or organizational management, development, research or curatorship, operations, or facility management. And the shortlisted artists are... My name is Rosanna Cyprian. There was an idea. Someone had an idea passed in my office, and they said it would be really nice to have some dance classes for our youth in Fort Chip who don't get to experience this. We connected with Ms. Kelly, and instead of having our youth join a dance class that was already in progress with dancers who were already trained, we created a whole program specifically for them. Really, all we need is a little creativity, a little bit of faith, and a little, a little bit of support, and we can make anything happen. Administration Award. For the inspiration, there are many individuals out there who have limited capacity to be able to do things. Um, you know, so we want to be the voice for them to be able to bring those to light. Um, and their success, you know, is what drives me, keeps me going. So we want to talk to them to be able to gain wisdom to use that into future programming and basically when they excel that's what drives me to do the work that i do and keeps me going my name is Jenny Stanley. administration we have had many prestigious events very you know important corporate events in the space and I find with those events, they have so much support, so much, so many volunteers, and lots of support from our staff. But the events that really get my heart are, you know, the little people with a vision for a fantastic event, and they have maybe never been a part of something like that before, and they don't really know where to start. So they come to me, we work together, maybe it's a friend's wedding, maybe, it's a workshop they want to do, and it, it is so fulfilling when it's complete, when they come to me and they say, Tammy, we did it, thank you so much. And I get hugs and thank yous, and I get so much personal satisfaction from working with those people on their very own. <laughs> I'm a 
uh, board member with Arts Council with Buffalo, and it is my distinct pleasure to uh, give up the award for Arts Administration. The recipient is Rosanna Supreme. category. I see you. Usually this this moment is for us. Normally, as I said, we're behind the scenes. Um, and I just wanted to say a couple of quick thank yous. The first one is to my partner in the really cool hat. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing art back into my life. I also want to say um, thank you to the Wood Buffalo Arts Council. Thank you for this. Thank you to our cool creative leaders who are so open to using art as a form of um, prevention in our programming. Thank you so much. So this year I set a goal to try to be more brave. Um, and who better to draw inspiration from than the artists themselves? how brave it, you must be and how much courage it must take to, to take something that's in your mind and your heart and to put it out into the world. I can't imagine a more uh, a brave group of people. So thank you. <laughs> so artists, you keep being brave and us administrators will be in the background supporting you every step of the way. Creative collaboration recognizes an artist or group who was part of an innovative partnership that used the arts to contribute to a balanced community by highlighting or focusing on a community need or social issue. And the short list of artists are... My name is Melinda Richter and I am the artistic director of Wyman Dance Company and I am nominated in the creative collaboration category. I've always wanted to create a piece about residential schools. So this year, uh, with a bunch of my dancers, ages eight and under, I created a dance based on Stephen Harper's Apology. And I had the kids' costume in very similar um, school attire that the children res in residential school wore. We also had um, similar looking desks on stage. Um, and throughout the piece, the kids just really performed and emulated um, some of the hardships that everyone faced. Uh, hi, my name is Michelle Major. I am a Buffy Award. Sometimes, you know, if you have experienced members, they can do a whole bunch of bowls without a lot of difficulty. We have people who are brand new. It takes them a long time to get a bowl done. The level of awareness there, just bringing arts to the community and extending that to um, community members, giving them an opportunity to try something different. But first and foremost, um, I think it's about helping our community in whatever way we can. And uh, this has a focus on food insecurity. So. I am Gary Bertie. Creative collaboration along with composite high school kids. And then doing these projects with Fort Chip and John V and Fort Mackay and Conklin and 468, these are all uh, 
series of interconnected pieces focused on unity through diversity. Because in that context of unity through diversity, you engage people from all kinds of backgrounds. Like in comp, there's about 27 different um, language groups, for sure. After 105 years, we thought this is how we got to be here. So. We're back. The buffet was great, but whoever served this woman broccoli, don't walk behind her. As we said, we missed the 2022 awards, so we came back with this Phil Droid and shiny girl. And it is great to be here to present. What are we presenting? <laughs> well, don't mess it up like in 2019. <laughs> we are very proud to present the award for Creative, Creative Collaboration. <laughs> and the winner is...
know, that's not it. Oh, honey, what an amazing journey. It was 100 years of arts and an innovation, and it really started right here. 2022. Yes. All right. Pleasure to be here. All right. We are incredibly grateful to spend this time with all of you. All right. We hope that we can show you how impactful a space such as Art Inc. Arts Inc. can be to a community. start out as a space to entertain and to educate, but just like a little fertilized egg in incubation. <laughs> Art Inc. will give birth to beautiful creations. It will really invite the community to think outside the box and put your wings and fly. Uh -huh. Well, there are many ways to support the development of this future. Mm -hmm. You can purchase the 90 for 90 outside in our exhibit. There they are. You can also get a psychic reading from Simmer Down and Stella the Wall. You can purchase a Arts Council membership. Or nominating artists for 2023. Mm -hmm. A million or two lying around. Anybody going once? No? Going twice? No, so you're pointed at us. We tried, we tried, oh well. Well, for those that don't wish for the night's end, stick around to enjoy more entertainment by the border parks. Thanks very much for coming out. Spending this time with us to support the arts. I'm originally from former Yugoslavia and I've been involved um, for more than 20 years in different art media. When I saw different categories, I did the small sketches and then modify during the work when I met the person. My name is Mitchell Bowers, but I'm more commonly known by my drag character Sima Down. For the promotions, I created uh, one of the makeup looks. So I had a lot of ideas going into uh, this creating this makeup look. It was through cons consultation with the model and really looking at her artwork that inspired the final outcome, which was the Northern Lights, and then um, using feathers and the medicine wheel colors as well to really uh, take some of that direct symbolism from indigenous culture. My name is Jenna Buffett. What I created with the Buffy's artistic team was totally different than anything I've ever done actually. The shoot was 12 different people which um, represented 12 different categories for the Buffy Awards and I photographed them to bring to life this kind of futuristic feel. My name is Luel Jamal and I'm the Artistic Director of Symmetry Theatre. Um, I thought one of the coolest ways to kind of highlight the importance of Latin acknowledgement would be through performances um, where the creators of those performances were Indigenous and they were um, showing us how they themselves were inspired by the land. Hello everybody, my name is Megan Schott. I am a Cree and then a artist. My Girl is a video for the Connection to Land video series and I wrote the screenplay for it. I think my favorite part of the process was just knowing how much stronger I got as an artist. In the beginning, I think I was looking for a lot of reassurance that I was doing it right. Um, but at the end of the day, like it's me that, 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 that decides that, so. My name is Melinda Richter, and my piece for the land acknowledgement video was um, 
about my home. Um, I'm from John Bay. It's where my family's from. It's where I grew up. It's where I got married. It's where my grandparents are buried. And I just wanted um, to really show the beauty of our home, how special it is, and really the magical connection that I feel when I'm home with my family. Hi, I'm Carly Christie. My role in the Buckies is set design. The thing that I am most proud of in this design is working with more of a sculptural and very light dependent uh, materials and creating these Northern Light-esque shapes. I'm really looking forward to see all the creatives in one room being awarded for achieving excellence in the artistic field, especially in Alberta. I think we can all be very proud.